Fahim Saleh was born in 1986 to Bangladeshi parents in Saudi Arabia. He shared an amazing and healthy relationship with his parents and two sisters, one eight years older and the other four years younger. His family spent years in the Middle East where their father worked as a software consultant at IBM and their mother as a homemaker. They eventually moved out to New York in 1991 and lived in Poughkeepsie, where Fahim attended grade school and then settled in Rochester. In his teen years, Fahim learned coding and started app development. At the age of 15, he built a social network called TeenHangout.com, which was appraised as too early for its time. When he began making some earnings from this community-centered blogging forum, his creative efforts got further encouraged. While in high school, he began a prankster website, prankdial.com, which allowed users to make anonymous prank phone calls. Prankdial had earned him greater than 10 million until 2018. He graduated high school and in 2009, Fahim graduated from Bentley University with a bachelor's degree in computer and information science. In 2015, he founded a ride-sharing company called Pathau in his home country of Bangladesh, calling it the most well-funded startup in the country and recently valued at over $100 million. He was also an investor in Pickup, Colombia's largest motorcycle ride-sharing company. But his big breakthrough as a CEO came in 2018 when he founded Gokata, another motorcycle ride-sharing company based in Lagos, Nigeria. By June 2019, the company made $5.3 million in revenue. But by January 2020, Lagos state government placed a ban on bike riding across the majority roads in the state, which severely impacted the operations of his company. In response, Fahim expressed that being an entrepreneur was never easy, but he wished to continue his incredible tech journey in the new territories with fresh ideas. You know, as an entrepreneur, I'm never gonna give up because that's the true attribute of an entrepreneur, never giving up. But this has definitely been a blow. Um, entrepreneurs are the ones that... In 2019, he purchased a $2.2 million condo in the heart of Manhattan. At 33, Fahim was dubbed as the Elon Musk of the developing world for his splendid success at a comparatively young age. Those around him adored his work ethic and had high hopes for his future. It has been 24 hours since Fahim's family last spoke to him. At 3.30 p.m., his cousin went to his apartment to go and check on him. But as they buzzed his door and heard no answer, they tried the door. To their horror, they came into a hellish scene and immediately phoned the police. When police arrived at the scene, they came to a gruesome discovery as well. Fahim's torso was found in the corner of his living room and his head, arms, and legs had been separated into plastic bags. They also noticed an electric saw that was still plugged in, a vacuum cleaner, and cleaning products nearby. Police noticed that the blood immediately around the torso hadn't yet blackened, suggesting that Fahim had only recently been dismembered, likely within the last hour. Authorities took it upon themselves to see the last time Fahim was seen alive via surveillance cameras, and they saw him on the footage leaving earlier the previous day and then returning to the condo at 1.40 p.m. to take his private elevator straight to his room. But then they also noticed someone else entering the elevator with him. In the footage, he was followed into the building, an elevator by a man dressed in all black with a black mask and carrying a bag. The last image captured by the camera was of a brief verbal exchange and then the assailant attacking Fahim with a stun gun right before the doors closed. What took place afterwards resulted in the discovery the following day. While looking through Fahim's phone, however, the detectives uncovered an uncanny conversation. They discovered that somebody had been stealing money from him, 
totaling close to $100,000 in PayPal and Intuit transfers. Fahim had confronted the person via text, and instead of reporting them for theft, they worked out a repayment plan. That somebody was Tyrese Haspel. Twenty-one-year-old Tyrese Haspel was described as a quiet but friendly young man. Throughout his childhood, he bounced from one relative's house to another before he was placed in foster care. By the time he was a 16-year-old high school student, he applied to be Fahim Saleh's assistant online, and by the time the two met, Fahim had already established himself as a pioneer of tech startups and a self-made millionaire. Once Tyrese began working with him, he mainly became obsessed with the CEO jet-setting lifestyle. Tyrese allegedly stole from his boss, signed emails to associates with the title Chief of Staff, and hosted friends at Fahim's apartment, passing the condo off as his own. As Fahim began spending more time abroad working on his startups, Tyrese lived out his fantasy life and took vicariously living through his boss to a whole new level. He treated his friends to dinner, drinks, and a show in Manhattan, and at the end of the night, he'd invite them back to Fahim's place, a friend of Tyrese and one other person confirmed. When he brought Fahim's dog Layla to her grooming appointments in the West Village, he registered her as his own pet. We had no idea she wasn't his, a receptionist at Biscuits and Bath said. He seemed to really love the dog. It is clear that Fahim was not aware of Tyrese's behavior while he was not around. The days following the discovery, police were able to connect more dots between Fahim and Tyrese with an abundance of evidence. Tyrese had left behind anti-felon identification cards from the taser all around the crime scene like confetti. He also left a receipt at the apartment for purchasing the saw and cleaning supplies. And when the detectives looked through the footage at Home Depot, there he was. Two days after the murder, he purchased birthday balloons for his girlfriend with Fahim's card. To top it all off, Smart Tyrese also kept transferring money from Fahim's account to himself four days after the murder. And just one more, he even used Fahim's card for his rides to and from the crime scene. With all of this newfound evidence, prosecutors were able to piece together what had happened. When Fahim left that morning to take his three-mile run, he came back and Tyrese followed him into the elevator. A quick verbal exchange happened before Fahim was stunned with the taser to immobilize him before stabbing him. An autopsy report declared his cause of death was multiple stab wounds, with the most fatal being five at his neck and torso. And Tyrese waited overnight for his blood to coagulate. The next morning, he stopped by Home Depot to buy an electric saw and cleaning supplies before returning to the condo to dismember the body in a relatively bloodless scene. While in the midst, they believe his relative at the door startled him, sending him fleeing down a flight of stairs and out of a service door onto Suffolk Street. After a three-day investigation, Tyrese was arrested and charged with first and second degree murder, second degree grand larceny, second degree burglary, concealment of a human corpse, as well as tampering with physical evidence. Tyrese pleaded not guilty in October 2020. His girlfriend, Maureen, claims that he is innocent and she has a hard time believing he is Fahim's killer. I have everybody attacking him and no defense whatsoever. And I know that I'm the person that knows him the best. So it felt important to be able to tell people to keep an open mind because we don't know what is going on. He, he is my only family here. So without him, I need to go back to my family. How does it make you feel that you, you say he's your only family? I'm so, I'm so heartbroken to leave him behind. Tyrese's attorney said that he had no prior contact with the criminal justice system and that there is so much more to the narrative 
than the accusations in his arrest. When you put out these facts, allegations, it sullies our client, it paints a picture to the public that this guy's a bad dude before the public knows anything about it. And I think we want a fair trial. He's in time to due process of law. And about Tyrese, one police officer expressed, this guy is the new American psycho, only dumber. He still awaits trial and is held without bail at Rikers Island. While in the peak of the coronavirus pandemic and protests, the family had to identify his mutilated body via pictures. For his funeral, they were able to put his body parts back together and lay him to rest. Fahim was worth $6 million when he died, and his net worth was estimated to be $150 million. Since he did not leave a will or have any wife or children, his money would go to his parents under New York law. His sister, Rifayat Saleh, asked the court to be quickly appointed as the administrator of Fahim's estate so that she could access funds to continue the operations of his businesses, and the judge allowed her to collect $4 million. The untimely death of the visionary entrepreneur has caused an irreplaceable loss in the tech world and to those who loved him. May Fahim rest in paradise and his family find justice and ease on his behalf. And thank you all for watching.